Hello, this is Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. Each week we provide the sermon from our worship service as a way of sharing the hope we have found in Jesus Christ. To learn more about Lord of Life, please visit our website at www.lordoflife.online. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, This generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live in the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? God of the stars and God of our hearts, Our days will pass, but your words will last. The earth might fade, but your words will last. Our memories might blur, but your words will last. The grass will wither, but your words will last. The sky could go dark, and your words would last. So as we listen today, help us to hold on to what will last. Help us hold on to you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. When something hits close to home, it affects us deeply, right? During the Advent and Christmas season, we journey through scriptures and rituals that are tender, heavy with emotion, and yet vulnerable. We carry the memories and truths of this season close to our hearts, close to home, which is our theme for Advent, acknowledges that we are already but not yet. It's the tension of our faith. Emmanuel is with us, and yet God's promised day, our everlasting home, is not yet fully realized. It names our deep longing for God to come close to us. The Advent and Christmas scriptures are rich with home metaphors and imagery. John the Baptist prophesies about the one who is to come, but reminds us that we are still wandering far from God's promised day. His message hits close to home, especially for those experiencing inequity and oppression. After receiving the angel's news, Mary retreats to Elizabeth's home, seeking refuge and safety. Christ is born in the midst of a journey home, in a crowded dwelling amidst livestock and shepherds alike. The Magi travel far from home to pay homage to Christ, and having been warned in a dream, they avoid Herod by traveling home another way. In these scriptures, home is both physical and metaphorical, something we seek and something we are called to build. Ultimately, God is our home and resting place. God draws us near 
even as God draws near and makes a home on earth. And sacred ground is all around us. Close to home also names the pain many of us will carry with us into this season. The holidays can poke at our grief. Many will be missing loved ones and lo- who lost to sickness and tragedy. The traumas of the pandemic will still be with us. Many will have lost homes due to natural disasters, economic hardship, and unjust policies. Many do not feel safe in their own homes due to poor living conditions or harmful family dynamics. Many feel isolated and alone at home. We'll explore our theme through the readings each week as we consider what hope, peace, joy, and love have to say to us through Scripture. By now, most of us have been inundated by the message of Christmas in its most secular form. I heard Christmas music on the radio this morning as I was driving in. I confess I did not turn it off. Stories have been, uh, stores have been advertising pre, 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 pre Black Friday sales for what seems like the last year, right? And if you watched any of the Thanksgiving Day parades, you probably saw Santa make his grand arrival into the cities, right? Many of us have started shopping for the right presents for those we love. Then we come to worship on the first Sunday in Advent. No hype, no frills, not even an instrumental version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, although Laura could definitely pull it off. No, we come to worship, and the pastor says, our theme today is homesickness. The word homesick, by the way, because I know you're wondering, originated somewhere in 1765. It comes from a German word or a phrase that literally means Home pain or woe. What is your first memory of being homesick? For most of us, I bet one popped right into our heads. And since my wife is not here to defend herself, we had this conversation at dinner last night, and her response was the first time she went to camp. And they put her in the wrong cabin because her friend was in the other cabin. When you feel homesick, what do you long for? What do you hope for? I talk about being homesick today, but with our theme of hope at the center of our watching and waiting for Advent. College students from Lord of Life hopefully have received a message and maybe even some kind of a gift in recent days as they long for home and Christmas break. Many of us have already started planning our family gatherings. Some of us are looking forward to returning to our childhood homes, perhaps. But strangely enough, the gospel reading for the first Sunday in Advent on the surface, which seems to be more about apocalypse than anything else, serves as a reminder to the people of how far from home they truly are. We hear images of distress, confusion, and fear emerge in Luke chapter 21. In many ways, the feelings that these words evoke mirror the past two years of pandemic crisis, a world in turmoil, suffering from disasters, both natural and human-made, speaking to the realities of injustice in a chaotic world. So why do we read this text on the first Sunday in Advent? I confess I've asked that question myself a couple of times this week. Perhaps it is because it serves as a reminder of what and why we wait and watch. For context, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem on the back of a colt to shouts of Hosanna, right? And ever since, the leaders have been looking for a way to trap Jesus so that they can justify arresting him and ultimately crucifying him. The words Jesus shares today are part of his final discourse, that is, the last words of teaching. Jesus is teaching at the temple to his disciples to prepare them for what will come after his death. 
And Luke's gospel wasn't written down until many years after Jesus' crucifixion. And many of the things that Jesus is warning about in today's reading have in fact come to pass. But Jesus' words can also speak to us today. Jesus speaks about being ready, reminds us to look up, pay attention, be ready. Advent means coming or arrival. And this reading from Luke's gospel reminds us to prepare for two things. One, God coming to earth in the infant Jesus of Christmas for whom we wait. And the day when Christ returns. We don't have a specific date to put in our Google calendars. It sure would be a lot easier if we did. But we wait in faith for what we know will happen. So Advent isn't a matter of if, but when. Jesus reminds these early disciples and reminds us today to stay alert and to place our hope in a God who loves us and who comes to us in Jesus Christ. We can read in Luke's account, hope and expectation and good news. As one theologian says it, thankfully Jesus enters this world offering words not of foreboding, but of hope to a homesick people that felt far away from God and longed to be close to kin in the middle of the crisis. Stand up and raise your heads. Look up, Jesus said because your redemption is near. This Advent, may we be comforted by the one who dwells intimately with us. May we expand safety and sanctuary for everyone wandering far from home. May we come home, wherever home is found, to live fully with joy, hope, and courage. Amen. Thank you for listening today. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America based in Asbury, Iowa. We are committed to caring for our community and for our world through creative ministry. We'd love to have you join us for worship online each Sunday at 9 a.m. Till then, may God bless you and watch over you in these days ahead.